Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Windows 11 and how it's been for me for the past 60 days. Alright, so this video isn't exactly scripted. I just have a few notes that I've written down for things that have bugged me or that I've been really excited about. Honestly, my impressions and the things that stood out to me when switching from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And at the end, we'll basically just say whether or not you need to upgrade to Windows 11. So the first thing that I noticed and most people noticed and even mentioned in my comments, you can move the bar to the left if you want, but I don't like how you can't right click anywhere at the bottom bar and get to the options menu. So you used to be able to right click here and be able to get to a options menu. Now it's just taskbar settings. Um, also, I don't like that they've removed copy and paste words. So if I click on this document here that I just created, instead of having copy and paste here, we now have this little copy symbol, uh, cut, uh, rename, like I wouldn't even know that that was renamed without having to hover over it. Um, share, um, so if we copy it and now we can paste it as now the clipboard with a picture, but it doesn't like, it, I, I would prefer the old way of Windows 10, or at least having an option to show that. And then if you want to dig in more, you have to click show more options, and then it gets our original one. But I don't want to have to do the extra click just to see these. I, I don't know. That's just a little gripe, a little complaint, um, a little bit of the, you know, I don't always like new things. Uh, I do love new things but I don't always like new things, you know what I mean? I, if, I, if I'm used to an old way, and I think that a lot of people are like that. If you're used to the old way, Windows 10 still has these options, where Windows 11, you have to do the extra click to get the copy, cut, paste, things like that. One thing that I use all the time is my quick access menu here on the left, and a lot of times when I open this up, it is down here listed PC at the top. And then I have to scroll all the way up to get to my quick access that I have pinned to the top of the, the quick access bar here on the left. I wish it would automatically always be at the top there, but it's not. Um, I think I run into that most when I'm doing things like saving a document. Like when I just opened up the folder, it was fine. But if we go into Premiere, if I just pull up my most recent video of uh, Brother Not Brother here that I've been editing. So in here we say file, save as, and you can see here on the left, I have to scroll all the way up to get to my quick access. It's default here um, on this section over here on the left. So that's just another small gripe that I wish it would default to be at the top of that list and I can scroll down if I need other things. Things that I want to see the most often, I'm pinning them to that bar because I use them the most often. So why not? leave it at the top where I can get it the quickest. Like, it's quick access. I don't want to have to sit there and scroll up to get to it. Just another gripe. And then, when copying files. Oh, this one has bit me in the butt so hard. So, in Windows 10, when you're copying a file, um, the file folder logo down here, let me, yeah, I can't demonstrate it for you. This file folder logo here will actually have be a white file folder with a green bar going across showing that it's loading or it's transferring a file. Whereas this one, it's different. Now, if you look here, I have a single bar under Google Chrome showing that I have a Google Chrome tab open. But if I am transferring a file, let's go ahead and go, I'm just gonna drop this whole folder over. And so now, all you have is this tiny little bar at the bottom, but it's the same color as this bar here. So when you're maybe uh, halfway through, you might glance down and be like, oh, hey, it's not doing anything. No, it's still transferring those files, and you gotta pay attention on your own. It's not gonna have a different color. It's not gonna look different. Like, literally, it looks the same. Just, I accidentally closed out things while they're in the middle of transferring, and I just totally screwed myself over. I'm like, ah, now I gotta start all over again transferring those files. Um, super frustrating. But you can see here down at the bottom we're starting to get that little line that looks awfully similar to our one here for Google Chrome. You have to be careful of, you have to keep an eye on. It's another little thing that bugs me. Um, unfortunately, Windows 11, I don't know that I would say is better than Windows 10. 
so far in my experience, I haven't had anything that's been like, oh my gosh, that's better than what I was dealing with with Windows 10. I didn't actually have any complaints with Windows 10 because it was so similar to the previous experiences where this one is changing so much. It's trying to be a lot like Google Chrome and it's trying to be like Apple where everything is much more app based or whatever you want to call it. I think I showed you guys in this previous video, but if you right click on the taskbar, go into your taskbar settings, then we can go into our taskbar behaviors and then here on the left we can tell it center or left. Default, I, I changed it to left because I'm used to Windows 10, so that is just a little bit closer to what I was doing, so it's not as big or as harsh as a transition, but um, when I'm working on client computers, a lot of them that are on Windows 11 still have it centered. Um, they don't seem to be bothered. A lot of them tend to be younger people who grew up using uh, Google's Chromebooks, and Chromebooks do have the taskbar centered, just like a Mac. And a lot of people use Mac and Chromebooks and then they go to work and their employer's like, well, we use PCs. Well, now the taskbar is centered so that there's a little bit more of that flow. Um, it's, it feels a little easier for them. But for us older folks uh, that were around before the age of the internet, this might be just another small hurdle getting over that might be frustrating. One other issue I've run into, and I don't have an example right now, is uh, with Windows 11, they're still pushing out updates, they're still doing um, changes to the software and the system, so as time goes on, it'll be more and more bug-free, but more recently, I've actually run into some bugs, uh, one of them being that my audio driver doesn't work. So I use headphones when editing, uh, you see right here, uh, just so I get a clear uh, sound profile of what is coming out so that I can listen for things like other audio that I may miss if it's just coming out of the speakers on the monitor. Don't worry, if you like have this monitor, you're questioning this monitor, it's a fantastic monitor. However, there are bugs that come through. So one day I plugged in my headphones and there was no audio. It was still coming out of the, the, t the monitor. And I was like, well, what the heck? And so I went into settings and there was no audio jack option. Like it didn't even see that I had headphones plugged in at all. I went through all of the troubleshooting that Microsoft offered, things like that. So I ended up having to check for updates. There was no update. It's because most recently there was an update that somehow that got lost. Um, and then the next morning it was back. I, I know it's frustrating. It's little things. Reasons like that, I probably have would, would have stuck with Windows 10. Um, and I would recommend staying with Windows 10. And th honestly, we're kind of wrapping up here. It's kind of been not a stellar experience with Windows 11. I haven't had better performance. You know, things are just different. It's not necessarily better. And a lot of the reasons they're switching from Windows 10 to Windows 11 is because Windows 10 has a lot of patches from Windows 7, 8, whatever before and they just patched on. Well, Windows 11 is a whole new operating system. So all those patches no longer are patches like a Band-Aid on something that takes up more space. It's actually a whole new operating system on there that is built correctly. And so all of those bugs that were from before are fixed, but now we're running into new bugs with a new operating system, things that may have been missed, things like that. Um, and that's just the nature of that. Um, it's a lot of reasons why people with Macs don't update their software all the time. I'll show up at clients' offices that use Macs and they're still running uh, uh, operating system 10, 10 dot whatever and I think they're up to like 15, maybe even 18, I don't know. What is, let's, let's find out, 12. So a lot of my customers would be on like 10.10, 10.4, .10, uh, 10.11, um, and some of the more le recent ones are on 10.15, which is called Catalina, but most are not on the new Monterey Mac OS 12. And they're probably not there for the same reasons a lot of people aren't upgrading from Windows 10 to 11, and why I probably wouldn't recommend switching to, from 10 to 11 at this point. In the future, I think it'll be something that people will need to and I would recommend doing. At this point, July 7th, 2022, 
I don't necessarily recommend switching from 10 to 11. These are things that can be dealt with. And if you have questions about those things, like those are some tips like, hey, look, copy and paste isn't showing when you right click. Just use control C and control V, that's your copy and paste. Um, but if you don't wanna do that, you can right click and it's an icon now, rather than listing it copy and paste. Um, and then if you want to, you can right click and then show them more options and it'll have all of the other, the original options listed. One other thing they took away was disk management. You used to be able to access disk management pretty easily. Now you have to actually know what you're looking for and go into your Windows search bar and type in disk management. There we go. Kinda more difficult for it to find these things. Um, you, it's it's almost creating more of a barrier for entry for people that want to get into these things. And it's a little frustrating to see them do that, creating more steps and more like, hey, the only, re the only way to know is if you know. And I don't like that. I like, I like technology and things to be publicly accessible, a lot like the right to repair, repairing phones, repair devices, repair vehicles and machinery, repair and work on your computer. I feel like people should have that right to repair, but also it needs to be repairable, have ease of repairability. Mac is the exact opposite of any of that. As tempting as it is to get a Mac because it is, it, it just works, it is the thing. A lot of Macs just work. And that's why people love it, is they don't have to worry about that. But they also can't upgrade it. Whereas on a PC, if I want a new graphics card, I can buy a new graphics card, upgrade it, and now I can edit even better. Oh, you know what, my processor's running slow. You know what, get an upgrade. Oh, my, you know what, my motherboard can't handle you know, enough. Let's upgrade the motherboard and get a new processor so we can get even better results, things like that. You can continue to upgrade this frame here. I can maintain this main, this body and just continue upgrading pieces. Whereas on a Mac, you just have to buy a new Mac. And I think that's what keeps me with PC. If you ever, I don't even know if you guys care about this. This is getting to be a very convoluted video. Thank you so much if you're watching to this point. Um, but this is just kind of my review and my thoughts when I think about Windows 11 and my experience. I'm not gonna downgrade from Windows 11 back to 10. Um, I will keep it at Windows 11 just so that I can be on top of any new things. If something else gets released on Windows 11 that's, you know what, this is super helpful, I will be excited to make that video. Or you know what, they changed this and this doesn't work anymore, here's the workaround. I hope that I can catch that and make that video for you guys. If you have catches, workarounds, or issues with Windows 11 that you've run into that you have questions on, leave it in the comments below. I will work on trying to find the res resolution for you and I'll reply to that comment or maybe even make a video for you if it's a uh, common enough issue. So leave comments down below on what your thoughts are on Windows 11 and let me know. I I'm curious your thoughts, your opinion, share it down in the comments below. And uh, if you want to get any of these devices, things that I use in my videos, I'll have links for those down in the description below. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate. Those links do help to support this channel with no additional cost to you. And that is how I support making more unboxing videos and things like this. So please support this channel by using those links below when you do your Amazon shopping. And if not, don't even worry about it. But uh, if it is an option and you think about it, I appreciate it. If I've earned it, please consider subscribing. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.